everybody to our ERS International Congress virtual meeting in 2020. It's the first time for us to have this virtual meeting and it's my pleasure that we can again run this uh, CENTEC meeting on the advances, advances in transcutaneous CO2 monitoring in the acute and in the chronic CENTEC uh, setting and we will present data from, from science to clinical application. And it's my pleasure to start with a short introduction. It's also my, my pleasure to introduce my co-chair, Professor Jean Ring from Portugal. And he's, by the way, currently also the chair of our group, 0.2, 0.2, non-invasive ventilatory support within the assembly uh, two of the European Respiratory Society. The British Thoracic Society guidelines on the management of acute hypercapnic respiratory failure in adults um, definitely describe the importance of, of measuring continuously or intermittently arterial uh, blood gases. And of course, CO2 is one of the most important in this setting. And as uh, it's been uh, uh, described in this very important document published in Thorax in 2016, uh, transcutaneous CO2 monitoring could replace frequent ABG measurements. And so it is really feasible and reliable. I'd like to start with that study on continuous non-invasive PCO2 monitoring in patients with prolonged weaning. In that study, we did compare transcutaneous and end tidal PCO2 monitoring. On the left-hand side, you can see a patient with restrictive disease, on the right-hand side with COPD. And you can see the clear difference um, in regard of the differences between end tidal and transcutaneous CO2 monitoring. Transcutaneous given in blue and end tidal given in green. Uh, in a patient with restrictive diseases, you can see that there's no clear difference and that both of the techniques do well reflect arterially measured uh, blood gas values. However, the opposite turns out to be true in a patient with um, ventilation perfusion mismatching. And in this uh, patient, transcutaneous CO2 monitoring perfectly reflects arterial measurements, but end tidal CO2 uh, does clearly underestimate um, both uh, arterial measurements and also transcutaneous CO2 monitoring. 